Yeah, just the restart thing. So, uh, there you go. It's like a part of my yeah. Um, how's everyone doing? Good. Um, quick show of hands. How many of you, you know, you you reasonably say you have a good grasp of Creative Commons, either as a adopter you know, or user? Only one, two, three, four, maybe. Okay. So, so uh, <coughs> I I. This is a this is a Creative Commons presentation in disguise, <laughs> because because uh, I volunteer for Creative Commons SG and uh, uh, publicly, but to to spice things up a little, I, I'm sure you don't want to hear about the the dry stuff about Creative Commons. So I want to share with you a little bit of my own uh, journey, if you will. Okay. I joined. The library, the National Library Board, in 1996, uh, as a library. <coughs> uh, but in my, uh, in in truth, I was really more like a library administrator. Although in my heart, you know, I I subscribe to the librarian philosophy, so I call myself a librarian. So 1996, I joined the library, and in 2006, if you read from left to right, <coughs> 2006, ten years later, was the first time I got a Mac. Uh, the reason why I got a Mac. Now let me get to that. So then 2006 and then 2007, I published my first CC Music album. And the years 09, 10, 11, 12, uh, more CC Music albums. And finally 2013, I said, okay, I had a good run in the library world. I, I'll quit and start, of all things, a media, uh, a video production company. But really what I want to talk about is how Creative Commons played a part in my journey. So. What's Creative Commons? I don't know whether I'll stress anyone out by saying, uh, "What do you know of Creative Commons?" <laughs> maybe, maybe you know, Chin Mei is the <laughs> is the most convenient uh, volunteer I can arrow to. It's a license for free to share music kind of stuff. Anyone else? Uh, not really. No price. Kind of. Yeah. Well, it's I know it's off the cuff, but okay. Anyone? What What do you understand of uh, Creative Commons? Except Ben. Ben. Ben is. Uh, well, former lecturer in law and then now a researcher in law, so maybe we'll ask him to share later. Anyone, anyone else? What, what do you understand of, of, of Creative Commons? It's like an open source license for content as opposed to software. Open source license? N not quite according to my understanding. Maybe Ben, you want to share? Right. Okay. Under copyright, every creator has under copyright, every creator has the exclusive right to control whether you can make copies or adaptations of their work. And in the past, it was either all or nothing. You either had exerted your right or you gave it up. And if you wanted to say, I let you use it for free for non-commercial use, but you must pay me for commercial use, you needed a lawyer to draft an expensive license agreement in order to give permission of that kind of more complex nature. I mean, it sounds simple, but legally it's complex. And if you want attribution, I will give you for free, but you must attribute me. You needed a lawyer to draft that. But thanks to the good people at Creative Commons, they have pre-drafted those licenses for us. And because it's commonly available, they can say, instead of saying, I grant you license to use non-commercially without pay, but must attribute me, cannot alter, but within the same rights, <coughs> You can just say, I use C C B Y A T T T P. I'm glad uh, the good folks from Engineer SG is recording this because I'm going to review the, what Ben just said and write, write down word for word. <coughs> that's, that's the, uh, ben explains it much better than I can, but later I'll just cover you know, the highlights of what I understand. So, so in 2006, I got my first Mac, but the reason why I got um, my Mac was because I wanted to try out GarageBand. I heard of GarageBand, and uh, my friend said, oh, I can make music, and, I, and uh, as a teen, I learned how to play the guitar. Uh, maybe the guys, how many of you play the guitar? Okay, I don't know about you, right, but I picked up the guitar so that I can impress the girls. Huh? So, <coughs> then as I, as, I, as I practiced, I thought, hey, I, I, I kind of like this, you know, it's more than just impressing the girls. I didn't impress any girls in the end, but <laughs> I, 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 I love the guitar. But as all guitarists, maybe most guitarists will tell you, it's a lonely thing. You, you, need a, you don't have a drummer, no bassist, and nobody, and it's like, 
after a while, there's only so much you can take of your own playing. So when GarageBand Band came along, I thought, wow, now I have my own drummer and all that, right? So uh, I think three months, no, two months later, I, uh, I, I left GarageBand alone on, on the Mac. I didn't touch it, I didn't explore it. So after that, I think I took about a month uh, learning from trial and error from YouTube videos and I, uh, I, made, I took loops from GarageBand and came out the first song. I won't play that song. Uh, but that was my first uh, composition, if you will. And I uploaded it to archive.org and I licensed it under CC. So at that time, the, the, uh, there were a lot of uh, social media platforms coming up. Things that are still around, like Blogger, WordPress, Flickr, hopefully still around, <coughs> Internet Archive. Audio, how many of you remember audio.com? Only one. The guy, uh, the gentleman almost wanted to raise his hand. No, I don't quite remember. Audio.com was uh, th the first uh, uh, podcast, uh, podcast hosting platform. I mean, <coughs> they structured it such that it was uh, meant for podcasters, right? Uh, it was about the same guys who made Twitter. Yeah. So when, when all these things came up, you know, it was so easy for musicians to then not just create music but publish, so I was into it. At the same time, 2005, uh, I, I, maybe earlier, maybe later, I'm not sure, but I heard of Creative Commons. Uh, it blew me away because like Ben explains, <coughs> now it's like a paradigm shift. I don't know whether it's the same impact uh, on you, but as a librarian, we get constantly hammered, say copyright, you know, you're not supposed to touch this. So uh, uh, Ben has explained it. <coughs> it's like either this or this, there's no in-between space in a way. Right? So even if I wanted to share my work online, uh, Sometimes a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. When you start thinking of all the what ifs and cannots, then you, you're kind of stuck. Creative Commons came along, uh, like as I said, it's a paradigm shift because it says, now I am no longer in a position where I'm like hampered by uh, words people drafted, right? So I choose to share my work and it's robust because a team of lawyers have sat down, looked through everything. <coughs> they look at all the existing copyright laws in various jurisdictions and tried to, uh, no, my layman word is they matched it, right? So they made sure that what they came up with was applicable, is applicable to uh, uh, where you lived, where you choose to license. Uh, for your info now, Creative Commons is in the fourth version. Where, uh, the fourth version is, um, we're in a situation where you don't really have to rely on individual countries or jurisdictions for the license to apply anymore. Which means in simple terms, uh, we, we, you know, we have a lawyer in the house, I always say, uh, according to my layman understanding, <coughs> uh, it means you can adopt CC 4.0 and you don't, uh, it's applicable in, I would say, all jurisdictions. They have made sure that it is aligned to all countries without having to translate, to port over. So, uh, as I said, this is an excuse about CC. CC, there are four um, types, if you will. Each type, you can either take it on its own or combine them. So it's like, very, how, how many permutations would you have from this? Four, 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 I don't know. 16, is it? Yeah. <coughs> so uh, from left to right, attribution means you have to credit the person. So if you, you, you don't have to ask permission from a guy. Just take it, uh, just credit in the way that he has stated. Or you can combine with non-commercial. Or you can combine, so suppose I am releasing my music. Uh, if I allow people to, to sell it, um, then it will just be the most uh, liberal of all licenses, uh, CC license, <coughs> the first one from the left. If I say I would like you to use it, but I do not want you to use it for commercial purpose, then it will be combining one and two. Now if I want you to use my music, but I do not want you to modify it in any way, uh, I don't allow you to chop it up or what, then I would combine a third one, which is no derivatives. You have to use it as is. So finally, if I, uh, like I say, you don't have to use all four, right? So suppose I would like you to use my music, I'll li uh, I allow you to sell it, as long as you share it under the same conditions as I have, then I would use the first one and the last one. That's what share alike means. So I'm, I'm kind of forced, forcing you to say, if you use it, you have to adopt it under the same philosophy as well. 
So this is the flexibility that Creative Commons provides to content <coughs> owners and creators. Now, at the same time around that period, I came across CC Mixter. How many of you have heard of CC Mixter? Only Ben, Jin Mei. CC Mixter is this website. If you go to ccmixter.org, actually I'm not quite sure what they, why they call it Mixter with a T. I don't know. So how it works is, if you read from left to right, uh, musicians, any, anyone who creates audio, right, if you upload your samples up there, uh, so it's like guitar or drums or whatever synthesizer. It can be MIDI files, it could be WAV files. Um, sorry, not WAV files, MP3. Or you could be a singer, you record your acapella. So then once it's on the site, uh, that's where producers or DJs or people with, uh, who use digital audio workstations come in. They can download the samples, mix up the stuff. Uh, the, the, there are sites like uh, I think looperman.com or whatever. They uh, they do the same, but the difference here is this is built on CC. So you, if you upload or if you choose to download, you uh, later you share it, right? You have to adopt the CC license. That's what it's about. Uh, try to navigate you through this slide. So, um, 2005, th sorry, 2006, uh, I, I learned about CC and CC Mixter. So I uploaded my first they call it a stem. I uploaded my first uh, music sample uh, to CC Mixter in 2006. So that's the first. Nothing happened. And I plain forgot about it. Until 2008, I thought, oh, let me try again. I uploaded another sample. Now, that, uh, for some reason, the second sample, within, uh, within six months, someone remixed my, my stem. Uh, let me play that for you. This was a stem I uploaded. So it's just guitar uh, with the drums. Uh, actually, the best kind of stems are dry. That means you don't put reverb, you don't add drums, you, you keep it separate. Um, but being a newbie, I just uploaded this that I have uh, exported from GarageBand. This was all com uh, recorded and com composed and uh, mixed in GarageBand. So, that was a stem. And then I received an email notification from this guy. I thought, hey, your, uh, it says that your stem has been remixed. Which was like a Christmas present come early. So this was what I heard when I played it. I had no idea who this guy was. Uh, so it, out of the blue, I, I got this notification that he remixed my stem. He added his vocals. He did a little bit of additional tweaking. Uh, the best kind of mixing is so subtle, you don't really kind of hear it. So uh, he must have done also some mastering. Some, because you, if you hear the original just now, you know, there was a difference. So I guess in a span of a few years, I told you just now when I encountered Creative Commons, uh, my mind was blown, right? So this was the second time my mind was blown. I was like, wow, the stranger out of blue just remixed my stem. So that, that started me on, uh, uh, it, it increased my motivation to just contribute, uh, to contribute and make use of more stems from CC Mixter. Uh, now I want to talk about this album that was a collaboration with people, with total strangers that I, I, I got to know from CC Mixter. Um, let me try and navigate you through that. If you look at the top box on the top. So this was after the guy remixed my stem. I was quite pumped up. I said, wow, let me try something again. So I uploaded a different stem. Uh, it's a guitar track up to CC Mixter. 
for this time, I didn't have to wait like, two years. Uh, I think within three months after loading the stamp, someone, uh, I got an email notifi notification. My stamp got remixed. And from that remix, because EC Mixer, the site is uh, structured such that I could tell who remixed it and what other stamps they were, uh, the person used. So that that pointed me to people like, these are all their user names. Teru, Colette, Nava9. Three other users in CC Mixer. So what I did was, with the first guy, I remixed, no, in fact, the first two guys, I remixed their stamps, uploaded it. And then I liked the second <coughs> guy's stamp so much, I remixed another version, I uploaded it. Uh, and Nava9 was this lady who, uh, who sings. So the first two provided uh, instrument, instrumental stamps. Third one was uh, more, more smooth close. So, so now I have three tracks, I think in a, in a matter of uh, three months. So my day job was, li was a librarian and uh, to keep myself sane, I made music at night. Yeah. <coughs> and it occurred to me, I had, I had three tracks now. Uh, I guess that counts as an album, I could do something. <laughs> So I wrote to so I wrote to those three of them the red box there. I, I just asked, shall we collaborate? Are you interested in collaborating on a CC licensed album? Um, how does CC factor in? It it was simple to understand. We all understood CC. So the first thing we agreed was, or rather in a, my introduction to them, I said uh, I, I said who I was and why I want to do this, and said, look, we will release this under a CC by NC license. If you're okay, then let's 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 proceed. So they were okay. Um, to cut a long story short, <coughs> uh, they, they, their interests, they, I didn't hear from them for a long time until a year later, I reignited the conversation, I restarted the conversation. And, uh, they were quite nice, they were quite apologetic, and then they, they went full gear, and uh, we just came up with more tracks. All these were done through uh, MP3 files that we shared. Uh, audio files would go, oh, MP3, but they were good enough, they were good enough. So after that, that was 2008, and, uh, and by then, I also had a pseudo band. I had uh, a primary school friend, no, secondary school friend I reconnected, uh, in, so he was in Singapore. And he, he's a bio biologist by training. So there was a librarian <coughs> and a biologist, and we were trading MP3 files uh, in the dead of night, and we came out with this uh, uh, album. And later I wrote in another friend. So on our own, we came up with uh, all these CC licensed albums that we posted, uh, that we put up on uh, bandcamp.com. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, my journey from uh, uh, getting my, my Mac in 06, you know, uploading stuff, and then discovering CC, discovering CC Mixter. So, Finally, you know, I'm near the, in fact, near the end of my talk. I'll share with you my current project interests. <coughs> uh, my current interest is to look for East Asian kind of stems, be it uh, uh, musical stems or a cappellas. And in particular, I like, to, uh, I like to look for traditional lullabies, you know, like uh, how many of you know the Japanese lullaby, Takeda lullaby? You, you, you want to attempt like humming the tune? <laughs> 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 I will attempt humming a tune. I, I hope you can edit that part out. With you. <laughs> uh, have you heard of this tune? Yes, no? No idea. <coughs> go go to YouTube. Uh, look, uh, search for Takeda lullaby. It's a traditional lullaby. Uh, they they play it much slower, usually with a guitar accompaniment behind. Very beautiful. So what I did was I I remixed it. I got a friend to record the vocals, and I gave it a heavy metal twist. Let me just play this for you. Apologies to the, the non heavy metal fans.
So the lyrics are from <coughs> So I looked for traditional lullabies because I wanted public domain works. Because I don't want to deal with uh, I, I can't really find uh, traditional lullabies that, that's in CC. Actually it's kind of like con contradictory term, right? So so I got the lyrics, I adapted it, I managed to persuade my friend to sing the pals because I went to CC Mixter, I, uh, I went all over the place, I wrote to a friend in Japan and said, Do you do you know of any public domain works? Uh, then none. So I had to get a friend to record this. So I created the uh, all other instrument tracks on Logic Pro. I used Logic Pro, pieced it together, and I got my friend to upload her stems to CC Mixer. There's another part. Let me just play you this part. I hope I'm at the right portion. <laughs> I just wanted to hear that part where she recited. That's from a uh, Malay pantun, I think. I don't know whether James, you know. It's a it's a traditional Malay lullaby. Uh, does it sound familiar to anyone? <coughs> a bit, right? Yeah. So, so in this remix, that's what I mean. I I I am interested now in combining East Asian musical traditions with a modern twist. Why heavy metal? Because I came across this band called Baby Metal. <laughs> Have you heard of Baby Metal? <laughs> yeah, it's oh, you should really go check it out. It's a uh, I call it bubblegum pop meets heavy metal. Uh, they are like three girls, one singer, two little cute girls with two ponytails, and they sing uh, melodic heavy metal. Uh, you should really go check it out. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll just round off my, my, my sharing with uh, one more remix that I did. Uh, do I have any more slides? No, okay. So, I'll, I'll let you listen to this stem. <coughs> it's just a cappella. It's in Japanese. Okay, I'll stop soon. I'll just listen. Okay, and this part is a chorus. So this guy I met in I, I met in CC Mixter. I I I scanned through. I, I serendipitously serendipitously came across his stem. Uh, I, I I noticed he uploaded Japanese and Spanish vocals. Uh, so I read his bio. Apparently he's a Jap Japanese, but he's fluent in both languages. So I just wrote to him. I left a comment. I said, uh, "Would you be interested in uploading uh, more Japanese acapellas?" And I explained why I wanted. So it was game enough and uploaded this stem. So I remixed it and here's the remix. Again, uh, it's heavy metal, so, so apologies to the non-heavy metal fans.
there's a chorus. Play the last part, just bear with me, I'll just play the last part. Because all songs should have a proper end. <laughs> Pretty reasonable, thank you. Pretty reasonable stuff, and these are all MP3s. We don't we don't trade high high fidelity files. So he uploaded it on CC Mixer. I downloaded it. Then my my remix, I posted it back up again. So it's all CC license works. So if any one of you is uh, interested in any way, it could be composing uh, instrumental tracks, um, or you could want you want to recite traditional lullabies. Mandarin, Hokkien, whatever, East Asian, then I'll be happy to talk to you and see whether we want to collaborate on a CC license album. Okay? Thanks a lot. Question. Yeah. Did you decide on the key or the tempo before? Are we uh, no. No. Uh, in CC Mixer, when, uh, when you upload a stem, all they ask for is uh, BP, your tempo, BPM, uh, that's it. So you figure out the key and all that. And if, if you are a little more conversant in uh, the DAW, uh, you, can, you can change the pitch or stretch it. Okay. Yeah. Did the guys know that you were going to heavy metalize him? Uh, well, in this case he did. The vocal is kind of the right thing. Um, I think he, he knew because when I left him a comment, I said I wanted to do stuff inspired by baby metal. Uh, but if you listen to his... So what he did was he recorded his a cappella. He also did a remix, his own version. And it, it was more like a pop, pop rock, not heavy metal. So, so if you listen to the versions, it, there's a difference. Yeah. But he didn't expect it to be so heavy. That's the thing. But he, 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 he liked it, so, so it's fine. Yeah. My recording setup at home? Um, I have... Uh, uh, now I have a... Um, um, what's a small... Min Mac Mini. I have a Mac Mini. And what do I have? I use a Line 6 audio interface. And that's it. Uh, my digital audio workstation is Logic Pro. My sound libraries, I used to rely entirely uh, uh, on GarageBand or Logic Pro, but I've since bought um, East-West libraries, uh, partly because for work, so I just use this. That's my setup. Um, the guitars you hear uh, all MIDI. I used to record uh, my, guitar, my own guitar, but I got lazy. It's like, it's like, uh, <coughs> so the lazier I got, the more out of touch I was. So everything is through MIDI. So I use your uh, East-West libraries for work? Yeah. Yeah. Is less library for work? For work? For uh, your video production? I, I, well, okay, no. I bought, well, I don't know whether you work for East West Libraries, but <laughs> I bought East West Libraries uh, as, a, as a personal investment. Uh, so, so now I use it for work. Yeah. Any more questions? What about your monitors? What, what oh, uh, I don't, I don't use, uh, studio monitors at home because it's not practical for me to, to play music out loud when I do it at, uh, at night. So this song, th it's all mixed using earphones. Yeah. So I, I have a kind of, out of, out of practical reasons, uh, I only mix through earphones. So for work, then I bring it to studio, uh, my, my office, and I mix through studios. But uh, I, I came across this article where this guy 
I think he's a Grammy Award uh, mastering uh, <coughs> sound engineer. And he says now he mixes almost like 90% of his work through earphones. So it is possible. What's next for you? You plan to make this into a What's next? Sorry, going back to full time? Uh, yeah, you plan to turn this um, as a well, maybe I don't know whether you caught the beginning of my, my presentation. I, I so I left li uh, I, the library world in 2013. I started my own video production company. So I do the sound mixing stuff for work. Uh, also part of this whole journey, it's it's through getting into it uh, that I began to realize. Oh, so this is what sound mixing, uh, sound engineering is about. So in the beginning years, I didn't know what was EQ and compression, and slowly, people in the community said, I think you should EQ that. I thought, well, what's that? <laughs> so I went to, went to read up and uh, look. So uh, I can safely say my full-time work is doing uh, music or half, maybe one third of the time. Okay, <clears throat> what if somebody violates the terms in which I release my work under CC? For, so for example, uh, either, I, uh, either this person, I find out that they didn't attribute me, or suppose it's a CC non-commercial license and they use it for commercial purposes, then I would say it's just like any copyright violation that you discover. Either, either you don't discover, or if you discover, then you have to decide, do you want to uh, take action or not? Whether you can actually make them do anything, that's something else. Uh, and that's a current problem with uh, copyright anyway. So, so to answer you, uh, I mean, that's, that's what I would do. Lah. If I happen to know, then I have uh, recourse to legal action. Uh, and I understand CC license clear enough. There are cases where CC license uh, has been successfully fought in court and awarded to uh, the creator for violation.